Hear this reading from Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man, and he did not want to publicly disgrace her. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived within her is by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through this prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until after the son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. These are God's words for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Jesus, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, the birth of Jesus is one of wonder and of sacrifice and of faithfulness. We don't teach it that way. We teach the wonder part, don't we? Oh, it's amazing. She was, she had a baby by the Holy Spirit. But we really don't talk about the extreme faithful, the faithfulness that was needed and the sacrifice of both Joseph and Mary. I mean, we know the, the Savior is important to us. I mean, it's through Jesus Christ that we have our salvation. It's important to think deeper than the wonder of a Hallmark movie and a glittery Christmas card as to what does the birth of Emmanuel mean? What does it mean for the lives of all those who are affected? You know, I'm one of those people, if you've ever been in my house, I collect something. <laughs> Y'all know what it is? Nativity scenes. Over half of these are mine up here. <laughs> I got a lot of Josephs. Now, I am not requesting any more, just so you know. Um, but each one has a special meaning for me. It, it reminds me of a place or a person or a trip that I took. So they all have special meaning. And I've got them in every shape, size, and nationality. I love it. Because it's the way that we understand God within our culture. But this is, here's the thing, that's my little phrase, here's the thing. We truly have no clue what it was for Mary and Joseph in their culture. I mean, we're used to unwed mothers. We have friends maybe that are having children through different means. But in biblical times, and even today in the Middle East, it is a significant shame for a woman to be pregnant and not be in a marriage. And some of the same things that Joseph had available to him are available to family members today. You see, shame is a very real thing in the Middle East, very real. And when Mary, who is betrothed, which means engaged or whatever, however we want to take that word, when she is betrothed to Joseph, it means that she is set apart for him. And one day he will bring her into his home, and they will be a family. 
And there are people who think Joseph was older. They think he was, you know, about Mary's age. I don't think that one's true. <laughs> but they believe that Joseph was probably an older person. Maybe he'd even had children from a previous marriage. The truth is we don't know. But we do know one thing about Joseph. He was a man who was faithful. And you know, the Matthew text is the only text that even talks about Joseph <coughs> and about his role in our Christmas story. In Joseph's time, a young woman who was pregnant and unmarried brought shame and disgrace upon her family. And in Mary's case, if it had gotten out that she was pregnant, it would have also brought shame and disgrace upon Joseph's family as well. Now, Joseph had several options available to him to resolve the issue. It would have been perfectly <coughs> legal for him to have had Mary stoned to death. Boom. Now, it might have been distasteful to think about it, but he had every right, and had he chosen that, had he chosen that, made that choice, he would never have been prosecuted legally. That's how important honor is in families in the Middle East. Now, he wanted to try and do something a little less dramatic. And so he made up his mind, what he's gonna do is he's just gonna come up with some reason why not to have, why to call off the engagement. He knew that she already stood to stand, she already stood to deal with the shame of being pregnant. And somehow they had to deal with that but he was just trying to extract himself to bring as little attention as possible. Thank God. Thank God that Joseph was a man of compassion and of faith. Scripture says that he was a righteous man, that he was a man who was more than good, it means that he is good and his actions are directed by his faith. He was a man who was, who was faithful in everything that he do. And then, he had a dream. He found out that Mary was pregnant. And then he had a dream. And the angel came to him and said, it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Things are not exactly what you expected, how you expected them to play out, Joseph. And then the angel challenged Joseph to make a decision that would change all of eternity. Listen to this again. This is verse 20 through 23. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife because a child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. For Joseph to say yes to the angel, to say yes to Mary, meant that he was going against everything that he knew, that society expected, and that he had been taught. He was going to do something different. But you know, often, if we really look at it, 
to do what is right. To do what is faithful sometimes contradicts what society expects and what we know to be the right thing. That was a difficult thing for Joseph. But it's also a difficult thing for us as well. There are things that are going on around us and we know they're not right. But to step up and to step out and to, to be a voice is difficult and it's frightening and it puts us out there to be seen by others. And how do we feel about that? And, and Joseph, in violating convention and accepting Mary to be his wife, he wasn't doing that for himself. He was doing it because he believed so deeply in what the angel told him and how the prophecy was coming through, coming true through them, that he know that he knew that it was what he was convicted and should do. He remained faithful to Mary because God, as God often does, intervenes in unexpected ways. Joseph, I know this isn't quite what you expected, how you thought your life was going to be lived out, but it's going to be okay. Joseph has to trust strange news. He has that this child is not a child from a rape or from illicit romantic affair, that this child came from the Holy Spirit. And that this is the, the, another thing that we don't get. Joseph doesn't get to name his child. That's a very honorable thing to do in a family. How many of y'all worked and worked and worked to find the perfect name for your children growing up? And if we're grandparents, we probably offered suggestions to our children. <laughs> But to not be the one to name his child, that was against conventions. And yet, Joseph accepted that he already had a name. A tiny infant born into a time when the chances of his even being born alive were already in the minority because infant mortality and mother mortality were very high. And yet here's Joseph being faithful and accepting the fact that this child who comes into the world is not going to have my hopes and dreams that I want for him to have he comes with the hopes and dreams of God Almighty. The hopes and dreams that will transform the world. Joseph is being asked to trust in a way that absolutely is beyond human comprehension. Joseph is being asked to trust in a way and be, requires an action of faith that few of us could ever conceive of. What about us? Where and how is God calling us into different places to make decisions and responsibilities that maybe they just seem too massive to accept? too incredible for us to ever be able to do, too hard for us to step forward with. Where are the unexpected places that God is calling each one of us to? Where are those places? I have a few on my list 
Do any of these sound familiar to you? Maybe we're called to keep on praying for that rebellious child who just can't seem to get their life together. Maybe it's to pray for that spouse who's struggling with their faith and praying to be open and available to them. Maybe you're being called, or maybe you need to, to pray for the courage to step out in a way that seems much too big for you. Maybe you're being called to give God priority in your life instead of everything else that is pushing and pulling on you all the time, and allow God to help you order your life into a way that makes sense and that is balanced and that is faithful. Here's a hard one. Maybe what God is calling us to do is to accept that some things cannot be changed and allow God to use those in a way to make a difference in the lives of others. You see, God will use the broken places in our lives if we allow it. God can use those so that maybe you can walk with someone going through a difficult time. Over time, I've learned a few things. I'm getting old got lots of gray hair. I earned most of it. I've also witnessed this. We are the ones who limit God. We are the ones who say, oh Lord, no, I can't do that. Mm -mm, that's too hard. I don't want to do that. I don't like it. And when we limit God, we are limiting the possibility of what can be when we are in partnership with God. Now, I know that it sounds all rosy and fairy tale, doesn't it? We're going to pray to Jesus and everything's going to be okay. The truth is, then it gets interesting when we say, okay, God, I don't know how to deal with this situation. I don't know how to deal with this person. I don't know how to forgive. I don't know how to move forward. I don't know how to order my life in a way that honors you. But when we ask God to intervene, then we can embrace what it means to truly live and to live free, to live free of the shackles of society around us, to live free of other people's opinions, and to live in the light and the glory of God. I did not say it would be easy, but it will be free. You will have a freedom in your life like you've never felt before. And when you're going through some of the most difficult times in your life, you will find that there is a that God sustains you in ways that you never dreamed possible. Joseph did not limit God's work. Joseph stepped out in a way that was more than expected of him. Joseph moved beyond society's conventions to love out God through his life. Joseph did it even though it was scary, even though it might make others think that he was foolish. Joseph stepped out. And because of Joseph's faithfulness, unto us a son was 
given. Unto us a child was born, and his name was Emmanuel. Lord, I ask that you give us each courage, <clears throat> that you give us the ability to say yes instead of no, that you grow us, Lord, into the people you would have us be so we can live fully for you. Transform our lives, our hearts, and our minds so that everywhere we go, we may be your witness to the world. God among us. Amen. <clears throat>